China, the greatest challenge to the U.S. The Biden administration labeling the communist country in its national security strategy. Chinese companies delisting from American stock markets, with their value taking a plunge. And one Western audit company facing a massive fine for fraud. New evidence hinting at a Chinese cover-up about the origin of COVID-19. Data revealing China stockpiled PPE before the pandemic broke out. And a report says Beijing is on track to surpass Washington in the space race by 2045. But an expert fears that timeline could be a lot closer. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan today previewed the Biden administration's new national security strategy. A top issue, how to deal with China's efforts to reshape international order. The strategy refers to China as America's greatest challenge. NTD's Melina Weisscup has more details. 22 months into the Biden administration, the White House has unveiled a new national security strategy. The 48-page document begins with the letter from the president where he says he believes the world is at an inflection point and that the decisions the United States makes today will determine the direction for the world. Now, in this uh, new strategy, the White House lists Russia and China as global priorities. Unsurprisingly, they also pledge to hold Beijing accountable for its human rights abuses, something that the White House is referring to as crimes against humanity. Now, it also notes China's economic edge. Here's National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan commenting on this new strategy earlier today. Is that a successful approach to dealing with competition with the PRC means not making countries choose sides, not dividing the world into rigid blocks, and not making our relationship with countries kind of dependent on this some kind of proxy fight between the U.S. and the PRC. As for China tariffs, the White House has been floating the idea of waiving the Trump era tariffs as a way to deal with inflation. But for now, these tariffs will stay in place while the policy is under a four year review. The national security plans comes as President Biden is warning Saudi Arabia that there will be consequences for the kingdom's decision to scale back oil production. The U.S. accuses OPEC of helping Russia. The only beneficiary that we can see uh, for OPEC's decision is, uh, is Russia at the moment. Some members in Congress now calling to punish the region by freezing arms sales to Saudi Arabia. Bad news for Chinese companies listed on the three largest U.S. stock exchanges. The value of these companies is taking a plunge. That, despite the annual listings of Chinese companies jumping tenfold in the past two years, that boost has benefited both the Chinese companies themselves and Wall Street. But the recent value drop comes down to growing tensions between the U.S. and the Chinese communist regime. The U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission regularly updates its list of companies that are trading on American exchanges. As of the end of September, there were 262 Chinese companies listed on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and NYSE American. These companies have a total market value of $775 billion. This is more than half a trillion dollars lower than the end of June. And that's primarily because several major state-owned enterprises delisted in August. Two Chinese state-owned enterprises remain listed on major U.S. exchanges. Following a new law on audit inspections, at least half of the Chinese companies are at risk of forced delistings. They represent 98 percent of the market value of Chinese companies listed on these exchanges. All publicly traded companies in the U.S. are supposed to have their auditors inspected by U.S. regulators. But the Chinese regime has long blocked inspections for all Chinese companies, citing national security concerns. Washington is now putting new focus on the issue, saying foreign companies that fail to comply will get delisted. In recent years, a number of Chinese companies faced millions of dollars in fines from American regulators. That's over accounting fraud. Le Shi Holding and Luck and Coffee are two of the biggest examples. They're considered China's Netflix and China's Starbucks. Luckin's American depository shares traded on Nasdaq until July 13, 2020. 
The company has agreed to pay a $180 million penalty to resolve the changes. Alongside those issues with Chinese businesses, at least one Western company is in the hot seat too. That's the Chinese branch of British financial consulting giant Deloitte. It's being forced to pay $20 million for audit fraud. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission found the company did not comply with audit requirements, saying Deloitte China tried to create the appearance that it tested clients' financial statements, but, quote, there was no evidence in the audit file that it had, in fact, done so. The SEC chair says Deloitte China fell woefully short of professional auditing requirements. In response, Deloitte China agreed to pay the $20 million fine and to take extensive corrective measures. In some cases, Chinese companies have avoided proper inspection to hide their strong connections to the Chinese Communist Party. Five Chinese companies recently applied a D-list from the New York Stock Exchange. An expert told the Epoch Times that the delistings were a desperate move to hide the fact that these enterprises are fully controlled by the CCP. The pandemic is thrusting Communist China back into the spotlight. That says fresh evidence reveals China was stockpiling medical protective equipment, or PPE, long before the pandemic officially broke out. According to The Telegraph, PPE exports from China to the U.S. fell around 50 percent between August and September of 2019. This would significantly challenge Beijing's theory that the pandemic originated from a seafood market in Wuhan, where the first COVID-19 cases emerged in December 2019. The significant drop in PPE supplies exiting China has raised alarm bells, and two former U.S. officials are taking notice. Dr. Tom McGinn, a senior health advisor at the Department of Homeland Security, and Colonel John Hoffman, a senior research fellow with the Food Protection and Defense Institute. As they traced back data, they also found China started to buy up PPE stocks in Europe, Australia, and the U.S. around the same time. One of the officials told The Telegraph, this is not the normal up and down that occurs. Worth noting, China is the world's biggest manufacturer of PPE. Years after the initial outbreak, questions are still being raised about the true timeline of the CCP virus's emergence, the disease that causes COVID-19. The infection's path has become even harder to trace back now. Chinese authorities disinfected the Wuhan seafood market right after the outbreak. They've also blocked independent investigations into the Wuhan lab, where some experts suspect the virus leaked from. Dozens of police officers from the Solomon Islands have flown to China for a training session. The South Pacific Island nation said Tuesday that it would cover policing techniques. The training will bring 32 officers to China for a month, where they'll visit various police stations. Earlier this month, Chinese police gave a separate training to a local police force in the Solomon Islands. The trainings are part of a security pact the two countries signed earlier this year. The agreement sparked concerns in the U.S. and Australia, which traditionally provided policing support in the strategically important region. Since then, the U.S. ramped up its effort to support the Solomon Islands and other countries in the region, countering China's rising influence. Last month, at a summit with Pacific Island leaders, the Biden administration said it would send FBI law enforcement trainers to the Solomon Islands this year. The Solomon Islands prime minister has told Australia that it's still the nation's security partner of choice. He also denied that the pact with China would allow Beijing to set up a military base in the country. As part of what's called the Second Island Chain, the Solomon Islands holds great geopolitical importance to U.S. defense, as well as its allies. The head of the U.K.'s intelligence service, Sir Jeremy Fleming, has a warning from Britain. He says China is a threat to national security and advises against using some of its technology. Let's zoom in. GCHQ Director Sir Jeremy Fleming has said the real long-term threat to UK national security is China. It's deliberately and patiently set out to gain strategic advantage by shaping the world's technology ecosystems. 
they see nations as either potential adversaries or potential client states to be threatened, bribed or coerced. He told BBC Radio 4's Today programme that Russia poses a very real threat here and now, but China's approach to and use of science and technology is a greater long-term concern. A fear of its own citizens, a freedom of speech, free trade, open tech, tech standards and alliances, the whole open democratic order and the international rules-based system. It's therefore no surprise that while the Chinese nation has worked to build an advanced economy, the party has used its resources to implement draconian national security laws, a surveillance culture, and an increasingly, increasingly aggressive military. He said countries seeking economic support from China might find this comes with a lot of strings attached, such as the imposed adoption of Chinese technologies. This could have potential security implications. China's foreign ministry pushed back against the British intelligence head's accusation, saying China's development does not pose a threat. Over in Thailand, a group of about 60 Christians who fled China are calling on the U.S. government for help. They may soon be deported back to China, where they could face persecution for their faith. NTD's Jason Perry has the story. A group of about 60 Chinese Christians fled China around three years ago to escape religious persecution from the communist regime. According to the Christian Post, the group fled the communist country after one of their church pastors was arrested and sentenced to nine years in prison for subversion of state power. The group first fled to South Korea to seek asylum but was unsuccessful. A member of the Shenzhen Holy Reformed Church, now called the Mayflower Church, spoke with KLTV while they were in South Korea. The Chinese government persecuted us because of our beliefs. They don't allow us to congregate, and they don't allow our kids to go to school in our church. The group then reportedly fled to Thailand to reduce their chances of being kidnapped by undercover Chinese agents. You know, the Chinese government has been persecuting Christians for, for a very long time. Uh, and it's not just Christians, but other faiths, including Falun Gong, but Muslims, Buddhists. I spoke with the prime minister of the East Turkestan government in exile. East Turkestan is also called Xinjiang. It's home to the Uyghurs, a mostly Muslim ethnic group who the Chinese Communist Party is committing a genocide against. The Chinese government, especially the Communist Party, feels that all religions are a threat to its power. And I would, I, I hopefully it doesn't happen, but... Um, it wouldn't be a surprise if Thailand uh, deported uh, these Christians back to China. Meanwhile, the founder of Freedom Seekers International, Dina Brown, posted a video to Facebook in September saying she was with a Chinese family that couldn't escape with the other members of the Mayflower Church. She didn't specify their whereabouts. I've been with them for three weeks because an American presence uh, protects them from the threat of severe Chinese treatment. I fly out Sunday and am replaced by other Americans as uh, they try to provide some protection here and I'll go into Washington DC to debrief about the situation. We continue working with the State Department and are praying that they will find a way to be able to resettle this small church to Texas where our organization is set up and ready to help them resettle. Jason Perry, NTD News. Is China on track to surpass the U.S. in space? And why does the regime see space as an ocean, calling the moon and stars islands in disputed territory? We sat down with Brandon Weikert, space and national security analyst for Insight. Brandon, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me again. So I want to start with a recent U.S. military financed study group report that says China is set to pass the U.S. in terms of the space race by 2045. So how did we get to this point? How did China almost catch up? Well, first of all, that's um, that was a report that I think was somewhat incorrect. I think they were playing it safe with their estimate to give themselves a lot of wiggle room. I think it's going to be a lot closer than 2045. I'm thinking in the next 
as early as seven years, five to seven years maybe, you're already seeing China being able to catch up to us in certain areas. They're not quite there with reusable rocket launches, um, but you know we didn't start getting that capability until about a decade or so ago. They are still able to do things that we were not anticipating that they would be able to do, such as getting this uh, new space station of theirs in orbit as quickly as they did, and getting many of our key allies to sign on in support of the new China space station. And that's just the beginning. So I think it's going to be sooner uh, than 2045. That's optimistic. Um, and uh, we're not ready. And the reason we're not ready is because we have wasted the last 30 years since the Cold War ended, uh, not you know, advancing, not enhancing our hard-won uh, strategic dominance in space. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. With China and Russia working together in this space race, what can the U.S. do? Plus, a breakdown on the Chinese regime's space strategy and why the head of China's lunar program views space as an ocean. Uh, he said that we in China, uh, the Chinese government views the universe as an ocean and we view uh, the, Mar uh, the moon as the South China Sea and Mars as uh, Huangyan Island. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow. Shen Yun Creations, the streaming platform from Shen Yun, featuring world class dance, past programs, and all original music. Masterclasses, behind the scenes, comedy, and more. Explore Shenyuncreations.com.